So this next concern actually evolved from a conversation that I was having with a young lady online. Her concern had to do with the changes that were occurring in leadership at this very moment, like right now, it's happening. It's happening everywhere though. Leadership changes occur more often than probably we want. But I shared some information with her that I thought would benefit you as well if you are an instructional leader undergoing changes uh, this summer or leadership changes, I'll say, this summer. The first thing that I would like for you to do is to be confident in the thing that you do, that thing, that thing, okay? That thing that you do that I don't want to say no one else can do what you do, but definitely no one else can do it like you do it. You want to be confident in that. And if you are brand new, like brand, brand new, and you're trying to figure it out, then leadership changes is a great opportunity for you to kind of work it out, figure it out, um, along with some of the other tasks or items that I'm going to share with you later. But for right now, let's talk about just being confident in what you do. How do you bring value to the organization? How do you bring, bring value to your school? Uh, myself, I remember one of my supervisors telling me, you know, Deidre has an uncanny ability to bring people together. And that still holds true today. That's just, a, that's that thing that I can do. I can bring people together, you know? I can, I can organize and I can structure. I am an excellent analyst. You give me some data, I'm gonna tear it all to pieces and design something for you, honey, that you didn't even think about. I'm innovative. I, all these things I know about myself, but I learned them on the job doing the work, okay? For the most part, if you are doing what you are supposed to do, you really don't have to worry about changes in leadership and things of that sort because you're doing your job. Now, I have to be candid and transparent. There are those of us that may not be doing that job. Maybe we're skating by <laughs> doing just enough to get by. But, you know, if, if you really have your heart and soul in this job, or at least have your gifts and your talents invested in your assignment and where you are, you can be sure that your gifts will make room for you. And you really don't have to be unsettled about new leadership coming in. Just do that thing that you do and be confident in it. Number two, I'd like for you, when new leadership comes in, I'd like for you to see yourself as an agent of their vision. Many times we get frustrated and we are unsettled about leadership because we're actually trying to be the leader <laughs> or be in charge or hold a particular position or do perform the actions of a particular position that you have not been hired for, <laughs> okay? Uh, and I don't know any other way to say that. You want to make sure that you see yourself as an agent of your supervisor's vision, okay? As, as an assistant principal, I thought of myself as an agent of my principal's vision. As a principal, I thought of myself as an agent of my superintendent's vision, right? Or, or my immediate supervisor's vision. See yourself as an agent, okay? A partner of your supervisor's vision or the new leader that's coming in. You want to listen and listen well. Listen and listen well. Hear the heart of what they are trying to do. At the end of the day, everyone is trying to increase student achievement. They want students to do well. As an agent of your supervisor's vision or the new leader's vision, you want to listen so you can figure out what part you play. You're listening for how you can help 
move that vision that that leader has because your greatest victory, no matter how many accolades you have, no matter what, what uh, achievements you, you acquire, I want you to know that your greatest victory, your greatest achievement is when your new leader or your leader supervisor, when they look great, when they look great. Okay. So don't fall into the trap of being impatient. And I, listen, I have been there. I'm so guilty. I feel bad for telling you <laughs> because I'm so guilty, but don't fall into the trap of being so impatient that you miss out on this journey to be great on this journey to fine tune and tweak and develop. Okay. Think of yourself as being behind stage. You're, you're backstage right now and you are getting ready because eventually you will be the new leader and it will be your turn. And when it's your turn, that's not the time to get ready. That's the time to be ready. So wherever you are, I want you to see yourself as the, the, an agent of your supervisor's vision. This new leader that's coming in, you're an agent of their vision. All right. Number three, some of the fear associated with new leadership coming in is, oh my God, what if they fire me? Oh my God. <laughs> what if they, you know, write me up because in education, you know, we're going to be written up, you know? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Um, what if they bully me? What if they harass me? What if they, you know, are mean to me? What, what if they don't hear me? What if they don't see me? These are all legitimate feelings and emotions that you have, you probably have, but you can rest in knowing. And, and I had to learn this, right? And I talked about this in another, another video, how you don't fit everywhere. You, you're not, you're not even in this world in and of your own self, right? You, you have a reason for being here. You have a purpose for being here. And this thing that we call life is a journey. Okay. Your career is part of your life. Now, make no mistake. Don't make it your life. I can tell you about that as well. Okay. This is part of your life. It is part of your journey. Everywhere you go, you are either learning something or giving something. So when you're in these spaces as an instructional leader, you're trying to figure out what do I give to this situation and what do I learn from this situation? So I said all that to say, if any rejection occurs or if, if there's any miscommunication or any friction, anything that might happen, right? You want to understand that any rejection is redirection. It's simply redirection for you to be able to get to your purpose or your next assignment or where you're supposed to be. Right. So don't, I, I think in education, we have this mindset of, uh, trophies, certificates, awards, things of that sort. Um, and, and all of those, all of those things are great. We all like to be recognized, but we also have to remember that there, there's a reason for you being here. You have a specific skill set. You have something that you do and maybe there's another place that needs what you have and it's okay. So if you get rejected in a particular place or area, you know, as a result of new leadership, it just means that you don't fit this particular vision, but there's a whole different audience. And, uh, it's so many school districts. It's so many schools, your next placement, or it, maybe they'll place you somewhere else, you know, in the district where your talents can shine. Listen, so don't take redirection or rejection as the end or, you know, embarrassment in any way. It, it's, it's just a redirection. So go <laughs> wherever that next place is. It might be in the same 
building the same district, but just a different place. It may be in another district, um, in a different place or the same, you know, level of leadership. But in any case, it's redirection and it's okay. It's okay. And number four, remember, this is always an opportunity when you get new leadership in that's new ideas, new direction, new everything. And so that thing that you do that I talked about, this is the opportunity for it to be uh, reshaped, for it to grow, for it to expand, you know, um, for you to use your gifts and talents, but maybe in a different light. So an opportunity to grow and expand. Don't overlook, I'm telling you, and, and I'm only telling you because I know I have been there before. So focused on that next step, so focused on the promotion, so focused on that next position that I entire, I miss some parts of my journey entirely. There, there are some people that I don't know that I work next to and I still don't know them because I was so focused with next. But be present in this moment so that you can take advantage of this opportunity to grow and to get better and to be excellent at what you do. Okay, those are my suggestions for you if you're undergoing new leadership. I'd love to hear from you if you have any other concerns or questions that I may be able to answer, listen, list them down in the comment section. And look, I started a new YouTube channel and I need you to go and subscribe, okay, to my YouTube channel at Dr. D Instructs. Follow me, okay? All right, guys, have a great day.